The Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. Hello and welcome to Harvest Today. Listen, there's been an upsurge in the release of faith-based films in recent years, and today Valerie talks with writer-director Sharon Wilharm about the latest trends in Christ-centered movies. And we're going to turn to the book of Genesis for today's teaching. Pastor Mark Lance shares some powerful principles in part one of Profile of a Dreamer. Well, who could that be about? Uh -huh. Oh, you know, we all know that's about Joseph. So be sure to turn to the book of Genesis. I forget, it's in the latter part yeah, uh, we'll find of it. Genesis. We'll yeah, find Pastor, it later. Pastor Mark will have um, that information yeah. for us. Uh, talking about the upsurge in, in Christian films, I mean, that's been happening for several years. It has. Uh, Facing Giants was a big one. Mm -hmm. Then you've got War God's Room. Not Dead, War Room. Mm -hmm. um, and it really goes back several decades, but it uh, thankfully, it seems like the producers, directors, the talent, the script writers have really upped their game in these last few years, and, and you've seen that firsthand. That's right. You know, I'm, I'm the person here on The Harvest Show who would attend all of the press junkets for mm -hmm. the films that were coming out, either faith-based or very inspirational and with some underlining Christian tones to them. And so that's, that's huge. And the way we get our entertainment has changed. So it has been a game changer mm -hmm. for um, faith-based films and uh, Christian films. Makers. Right, not necessarily going to 600 theaters at once, but That's the kind right. of marketing and, and getting the word out through churches and through various social media means. That's right, and through subscription-based viewing, like Netflix and Hulu. You know, those DVDs and those movies, you know, my daughter, she orders most of her entertainment from one of those companies. Mm -hmm. And so that has changed also and opened an avenue for filmmakers who want to share the good news um, there's just another avenue to do that. Right. And I got a chance, Stefan, you know, I'm always looking for an opportunity to share the good news through different venues mm -hmm. and avenues. And so I got a chance to realize my dream. We're going to talk about Joseph's dream a little later on in the show. But I got a chance to, you know, make my film debut. I went to, to shoot this film in, uh, uh, at the end this weekend. Mm -hmm. There we go. It's called uh, Summer of 67. There I am on the pew. This oh, is right the in the church. front. You're like the yes. pastor's, pastor's <laughs> spot right there. Right there. So here's uh -huh. the, the, scene, the church scene. And I got a chance to shoot this film. And I just wanted to say, you know, these are faith-based um, film directors and writers, and they are committed to it. Mm -hmm. And well, What was the atmosphere excellent. like in the actual, you know, on the job itself it was very serious. I mean, it was um, it was fun. It mm -hmm. was upbeat, but it was clear that we were there to do a job. And I can tell you this right now: that when you see a movie on that big screen, it looks amazing and glamorous. But it's a it's a daily grind. It's a bit of when a grind, huh? Yeah, you have to do the job. You have to know your lines. Mm -hmm. um, we took my scene. There were about probably five takes. And that's because there was so much involved in it. Um, it was a church scene. Congregants were coming outside, and the timing had to be done perfectly. So I had two lines, mm -hmm. but I want you to know I delivered you them. You delivered as, them with gusto. I, yes, I did. <laughs> I tried to do my best. Now, uh, real important question: Did you get to keep the? Did you get to keep the wardrobe? <laughs> no, I did not get the, to keep the wardrobe. And okay. the wardrobe was amazing. It looked like a time period. Yes, uh... it dated back to 1967, and okay. the director made many of the dresses um, that you see the congregants wearing. Many mm -hmm. of those dresses were made by the film director. So, yeah, no, yeah. I didn't get a chance to keep the wardrobe. Yeah. Did you have um, an opportunity to speak with? Um, I don't know, maybe the leads or others that have had. Uh, ongoing experience in Christian filmmaking? Yes, I did get a chance. Of course, I wanted to know what they know so that as I pursue my film career... Your dream. That, yes, yeah. that I'll know what to do. And so they told me they were well-trained. Many of them had degrees in theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was not their first film. And uh, mm -hmm. so that's, Good. that's what I learned. All right. For, uh, for directors, producers, <laughs> uh, talent scouts out there looking for a quality, quality female lead in the Christian or non-Christian genre, you can connect with us here and connect with <laughs> Miss Valerie Lowe. Hey, listen, we'd love to hear your thoughts today. Hey, why don't you go to our Facebook page, share what has been your most inspirational movement from, or moment from a Christian film. We'd love to hear that. Connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, also live at lacy.com. World News is next.
With this check on World News for Tuesday, June 20th, 2017, I'm Bob Nagel in for Chuck Freebie. Pro-government Syrian Central Military Media released footage on Tuesday to show the ongoing fighting between the Syrian army and the Islamic State group militants in a desert area in central Syria. Tanks were seen shelling suspected Islamic State positions near the Al-Talila Nature Preserve. The Syrian army continues to tighten control over the area where the IS troops have been dug in. As they flee, they are leaving equipment and personal belongings behind, much of the abandoned gear left behind to allow for a quicker escape. Up to 90 patients a day are being treated at a recently opened hospital in western Mosul. A spokesman for the International Committee of the Red Cross says most of the injuries are shell-related as shrapnel rips through homes and shops. Usually 40 to 50 people per day would be seen, but as the battle continues for control of the second largest city in Iraq, the bombings and attacks are ramping up. The fighting in Mosul has gone on for over eight months. The only hospital available up until now was two and a half hours away. Clinics had helped to aid victims, but the facility is a godsend to people in Mosul. British police on Tuesday were stationed outside the home in Cardiff of Darren Osborne, the man suspected in the Finsbury Park mosque attack. A large white van driven by Osborne swerved into a group of Muslims who were leaving an evening prayer service. One man died at the scene, but it's unclear whether or not the injuries were caused by the van. He was being treated by medical personnel before the van made impact with the group. Nine others were hospitalized in the incident that British police are calling a terror attack. The investigation goes on looking for motive in that case. Two deputies were shot on Monday at a Tennessee County courthouse when a pr prisoner wrestled a gun away from one of the deputies and shot him while leaving the courtroom. Another deputy was shot as a man fled the building. After entering and leaving a nearby house, the prisoner identified as Michael Bell went behind another house and shot himself. Bell died at the scene. The two injured deputies are reported to be in stable condition. And Argentina authorities believe they have found the biggest collection of Nazi artifacts in the country's history. Many experts believe members uh, from the Nazi party fled Germany near the end of the war and landed in Argentina. Some artifacts were sold to a museum recently in nearby Buenos Aires, and that triggered an investigation by police. While inspecting a home, they found a hidden room with boxes and shelves full of Nazi material. There was a photo of Adolf Hitler holding a looking glass that matched the one found in the home. Medical devices that were used on prisoners in the Nazi death camps were also seen. Reports say the home might have belonged to a doctor who might have been involved in the atrocities perpetrated by the Nazis. The search for additional artifacts continues there. And that is a check on World News for Tuesday, June 20th, 2017. I'm Bob Nagel. Coming up later, Pastor Mark Lance with today's Connections. But up next, filmmaker Sharon Wilharm talks about the latest trends in Christ-centered movies. We'll be right back after this. Got Facebook? Follow The Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. See new after the show guest interviews. Watch my updates and inspiration from Israel exclusively for Facebook. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today. There's no better time to take a pilgrimage to the Holy Land than now. It's affordable, fun, and most of all, it's life-changing. The words in the Bible take on a new meaning as you follow in the steps of Jesus from his birthplace to the site of his glorious resurrection. For a free information packet about travel to the Holy Land with the Sea Tours, November 8th through the 17th, give us a call or visit us online. Your faith will never be the same. Sharon Wilharm and her husband Fred are award-winning filmmakers currently working on their seventh feature film. Their previous movies have screened in theaters and churches across the country as well as in Europe, Africa, and Brazil. Welcome to The Harvest Show, Sharon. Thank you. Okay, so let me start by ask, asking you this question. I read it in your bio that you said you, were a, you are an accidental filmmaker. What do you mean by that? So many people, they dream of making movies, and that was never my vision. I um, had never given it any thought. I thought I was going to go into the ministry. I was a teacher. I had done 
drama, but it was with theater. And then I married a businessman and discovered that he had a dream of making movies. And so in 1999, he was making a documentary that was about local history. And somehow or another, that documentary turned into a faith-based feature film with me writing it, directing it, and starring in it. And from there, we've just kind of, I just kind of fell into filmmaking. And so that's your ministry now, Christian filmmaking. Talk about some of the trends happening now in the industry. It is an exciting time to be in faith-based films. Uh, it, the, the whole industry has changed a lot. Um, when we first started doing films, uh, there was a lot of interest in churches. They were looking for movies to show to their congregation, and then there was the DVDs in the Christian bookstores. But now it is opening up where there are more opportunities in theaters, um, with Fathom, AMC Independent, a lot of these opportunities where, you know, independent movies can actually get into theaters and do a release. And then also with like Netflix, Amazon, on, they're seeing that there is a market for faith-based films, and they are interested. And so it's a great time. And I can see um, in the backdrop that your <laughs> furniture looks like it's straight out of 1960s. So tell me about your new film called Summer of 67. Yeah, Summer of 67 is a Vietnam War story told from the perspective of the women left behind. And it follows the story of three girls whose um, young men are sent over to Vietnam. And this is um, the house of um, two of the sisters. And so we have spent since last summer gathering up props and costumes and basically just transforming an old house into a 60s home. And we're getting ready this week to, um, we've got a wedding and two funerals and a baby shower and a family dinner. So a lot going on this week in the 60s. And I know there in Nashville, you're shooting on location at some very historic sites. Tell me about those sites. We have been very blessed. We filmed in Trenton, Kentucky with um, a, a church there. We found it's very hard to find churches to film that have not added the big screens and all the, the modern touches, but we found a beautiful church in Trenton, Kentucky where we filmed. We went to Bowling Green and filmed at a park there, and also they have the historic rail park uh, train museum, and it's just a beautiful location that we were able to film at. We have filmed at a couple of restaurants, the Pleasant View Diner, the Catfish House, and we're getting ready to film at the Nashville National Cemetery. How are you incorporating the Christian message in your film without sounding too religious or like a Bible thumper? Basically, it's just a part of their lives. It's not that, you know, we're not plugging in sermons. It's just that these girls are dealing with issues and their faith comes up. And Ruby May is the one whose faith is probably the strongest. Uh, Kate is the one who kind of struggles the most. And Millie is the one who really needs the faith. And so each of them have their own faith story. And it's just integrated into their life. In a previous conversation with you, Sharon, you told me that attitudes in the industry about Christian films are evolving. They're changing. How so? I think that the general public is starting to see that there there is a market, there is a need. The, the level of filmmaking has gone up so much. It seems like each year, we, we do a lot of Christian film festivals, and each year when we see the films, they're getting better and better and better. And, you know, the market is recognizing that and really appreciating that they can see Christian movies that are well done and are entertaining and you know, that um, that people can enjoy, even if they don't necessarily, even if they're not a Christian, they can still appreciate, appreciate aspects. That's what we found with Providence. We thought it was going to be what a completely Christian same. audience, and then we had a lot of secular reviewers that said, hey, I'm not a Christian, but I could relate to these characters, and that was exciting to us. Now, I know that uh, this is um, a film that you probably underwrite with some funding, but it's kind of difficult. It's a challenge for Christian filmmakers to even just break even. How do you handle the financial part of this? We have been very blessed. Um, we we self-finance all of our movies, um, and God provides through other ways, but we, we really see it as a ministry. It is a labor of love. It is um, something that we do 
Um, you know, I always thought I was going to go into ministry and that's what this is. And so for us, it is a ministry to our cast and crew. It is a ministry to each and every person. Um, from the moment we step on set, every dealing that we have with people, we consider it, you know, sharing Jesus with the lost or with the saved. We've had, you know, with people who are hurting. And so that's for us. It is definitely a ministry. Okay, I know I have to let you get back to making <laughs> your movie, but uh, <laughs> for people who want to see Summer of 67, give us some more information about it. Well, we will be, we'll start the film festival circuit starting next spring, and then we'll be releasing it theatrically on Veterans Weekend, Veterans Day weekend, November 2018. If they would like to learn more, they can go to our website at summerof67.com. We also have a Facebook page where we, you know, post a bunch of pictures, and I blog at faithflixfilms.com, and I'm providing a pretty detailed behind the scenes look of pictures and description of all that we're doing. Well, thank you so much, Sharon, for joining us here today on The Harvest Show. Well, thank you for having me. And you heard Sharon, you can reach her at faithflixfilms.com or go to harvest-tv.com for more information. Harvest continues in just a moment. Here in Malawi in this area, there are no deep wells. These are shallow wells dug in the bottom of a dried out riverbed where they wait for water to rise up through the rocks below. Memory here, she's got about five gallons, 40 pounds of water that she'll carry on her head back to her home just to have uh, for her and her family. There's an opportunity for you to help sponsor a well so that in places like this, they have a deep water well nearby so they can have healthy water for a healthy life. The gastrointestinal tract is one of the most fascinating systems in the human anatomy. It powers the body with energy by converting food into fuel. To keep your GI tract functioning strongly, order the new Restoration Pack by Making Healthy Choices. For just $59.95, you get certified organic inulin, a vegan prebiotic powder, powerful probiotic blend plus, a formula that promotes regularity and contains absolutely no gluten. Liquid Multigels, a multivitamin with lutein, lycopene, and flaxseed oil. And Mineral Concentrate for maximum cell function and better focus. The all-natural ingredients in the Restoration Pack may help lower inflammation and in some cases impact weight loss. To order the new Restoration Pack for just $59.95 plus free shipping, go online or call 1-800-965-2345. That's 1-800-965-2345. Your body will thank you. Well, today and Thursday here on Connections, I'd like to talk to you on this subject, the profile of a dreamer. And I want to go to one of the most fascinating characters in the Old Testament. It's a young man by the name of Joseph. Here's a young kid who is full of dreams from God. And those dreams would one day lead him to his destiny of sitting on the throne of Egypt. Now, I know there's some of you watching. God has put some desires. He's put some dreams in your heart. And frankly, like Joseph, you've had people that have told you, you're crazy. You can never do that. You, you don't have what it takes. Or maybe they said, what in the world are you thinking chasing after that dream? But I want you to know that those desires have been placed by God in you for a reason. And I believe it's time for you to start living out those dreams, live out those desires. So let's get started on, on this journey of your dream by becoming a reality, by looking at this man, Joseph. I want you to see the profile of a dreamer. Look in Genesis chapter 37 and verse 3. The Bible said that Israel, his father, loved Joseph more than all of his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. The first thing about dreamers is this. Their dream begins before they ever take their first breath. Now, we all know that Israel, or Jacob, he favored Joseph over all the rest of his sons. And at first gl glance, it may seem a little unfair for a dad to have a favorite child. I think we all know how that goes. But when you carefully examine why Jacob loved J Joseph more than all the other boys, you realize it's because Joseph had a supernatural birth that set him apart. 
Rachel, Jacob's favorite wife, had been barren for many years, but God miraculously opened her womb. Look in Genesis 30 and verse number 23. She conceived, speaking of Rachel, and bare a son and said, God hath taken away my reproach. You know, God knew from the moment of Joseph's conception who he would become. God knew what he would achieve in saving an entire nation from famine and starvation. Likewise, my friend, I want you to know this today. Your dream, that dream inside of you, it began before you ever took your first breath. I believe that dream began with your miraculous conception in your mother's womb. It's there in your mother's womb that God knew everything about you. He designed you just like he wanted you to be. The psalmist said in Psalm 139 and 13, he said, you have possessed my reins. You've covered me in my mother's womb. Listen, friend, I don't want you to ever minimize the place that you came from. So many people say, well, my background is going to limit my dreams. Let me tell you, your dreams are not tied to your parents. Your dreams are not tied to the color of your skin. Your dreams are not tied even to the side of town on which you were born. God designed everything. He designed every situation around your birth, every person around your birth, because your dream was planted in you the moment you were conceived. You are a miracle today, so start living the miraculous life you were born to live. And again, we're here to pray that God just helps you with that dream. And right now, Brian Bush is standing by in Israel with your prayer request. Let's pray together and go. Brian? Well, thank you, Pastor Mark. I thought we would do something a little different today, friends. I'm standing beside a replica of a biblical watchtower. I came out here specifically today because to me, it symbolizes the role of prayer and its power in our lives. And today, I feel it would be special to pray for the Lester Summerall Evangelical Association. Please, won't you join me? Our loving Heavenly Father, thank you for the mission and ministry you have set up through Lassie to bring glory to your name. We pray for the individuals who lead this ministry. We thank you for the wonderful people who serve to fulfill its mission. Thank you, too, for our viewers, those who make up the body of Christ and ultimately are your hands for healing, your ears for listening, and your servants for your kingdom. May they all receive blessings to be a blessing. And lastly, that you, O oh Lord, you would lift up your name among the nations for your glory. As you did here in this land, I ask you still would, both here among its peoples and around the world, draw men unto yourself as Lissy continues to reach the untold billions yet untold. A watchtower for your kingdom. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's go back to the studio, friends, and don't forget, you can contact Lassie's prayer line at any time. Thanks so much, Brian Bush. That was Brian in the holy city of Jerusalem. And if you need prayer, remember, that number is 1-800-365-3732. Such a powerful teaching from Pastor Mark Lance talking about realizing your dreams. Uh, we know that Joseph had a dream, and that dream cost him something. And our dreams may cost us something for the kingdom of God. Well, Isn't absolutely. That right? And I think many times people fail to realize there's a process mm -hmm. to get you to fulfill your dream. Everybody wants to sit in the palace, but mm -hmm. nobody wants to walk through the process. They don't want to go through through the pit and the prison like Joseph had to. But it's in those times that you become the man or the woman that God wants you to be so you can fulfill that dream. Mm -hmm. well, and, and it's really the dream mm -hmm. that kind of help, can help carry you through those times, like Paul mm -hmm. said, to wage a warfare according mm -hmm. to that, that prophetic utterance that was given over you. You know, I, I believe we need to keep that in front of us at all times. When God gives you a desire or a dream, write it down, put it in a journal, put it in front of you. And that way you see that what's in front of you gets inside of you. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's that dream that 
that kept Joseph going in those very, very dark times. But we don't all dream the same, do we? No. I mean, we could, there could be a mother who's watching today having a dream for her children to Absolutely. grow up and do things for God and to live for him righteously. So how do we not get entangled with someone else's dreams because it looks bigger and better? Well, you know, the psalmist said this. He said, God will give you the desires of your okay. heart, which means when you're walking with God, he's going to put certain desires within you. You stay true to those desires even though they may not match up to what everybody else is doing. Look what's inside. Follow those desires, those natural God-given inclinations. And I believe when you do that, you're going to be pursuing the dream God's given to you and not to somebody else. Well, would you pray, Pastor Mark? I know Absolutely. there are people saying, you know, Lord, put that dream in my heart. It's there. Mm. And he just wants to reveal it to you. So would you pray? Let's pray together right now. Father, thank you for your Holy Spirit. God, you are working right now in the heart of somebody that is watching. There's a dream that is an awakening, a desire that is there, and I just pray that you would anoint. I pray that you would give favor. I pray, Lord, that you would just prosper their steps as they pursue their dream. May they stay faithful to that, never diverting from what you've called them to do. Lord, we believe that together, and we agree. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 One other Amen. quick question, Pastor Mark. Is it possible for us not to realize our dreams? Well, absolutely. You uh -huh. know, God's not going to make us. We have free choice. We have free will. We have to follow him. Okay, so you heard it if you need prayer. Also, 1-800-365-3732. Also, like to say thank you to Heather Gale for providing those photos from Summer of 67. Hey, we'll catch you tomorrow again on The Harvest Show. When Jesus gave his great commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, he was not just speaking to his disciples, he was speaking to you and me. Through the outreaches of the Sea Broadcasting's television, shortwave radio, free Bible distribution, and prayer line, souls come to faith and are saved every day. As a financial partner with the Sea Broadcasting, you too will be investing into the lives of men, women, and children as we proclaim God's word around the world together. LaCie Broadcasting Partners in Faith make it possible for millions to hear the Word of God in over 190 countries. You can be a partner in faith with us for as little as a monthly gift of $25. Your gifts help LaCie Broadcasting bring life, hope, and love into a dark world. Call 1-800-365-3732 and tell the prayer operator you want to be a partner in faith. That's 1-800-365-3732. Be a part of the Great Commission. What if I told you that there's a place full of loved ones' photos that gets prayed for regularly? Prayer offers a direct line to God, so who couldn't use a little more of it? Getting yourself or your loved ones on this wall is as easy as click and send. The chapel at LaCie Prayer Line has a wall of love that's waiting to be filled up. Just email your pictures to prayer at LaCie.com. That's it. Our chapel has been a focal point for prayer for the last 18 years. Let our prayer team pray for you. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.